We're here, it's sounded fun. And we came by to look at an airplane that caught our attention, as well as a lot of other people's attention. It's the Sport Cub from Cub Crafters, the company that's had a wonderful run last year with lots of deliveries. But what really caught people's attention was not the pretty airplane, it's the pretty floats underneath. I'm Dan Johnson, and we're talking today with John Moreland of SWT Aviation, or SWT Float Planes, I believe you corrected so. Yes, nice to meet you, Dan. So, when I first walked up and told you I was intrigued by the float plane uh, and the floats on this airplane, John, you said that uh, this is not actually a factory project. The factory is going to work with Aeroset, another fine float manufacturer, but they're not ready yet. That, and you needed something to satisfy a customer now, and you also had another mission. Tell me what that was. That, that's absolutely right, Dan. And the mission was that, that we are of the belief that float plane flying uh, should be more affordable, affordable than it is. Uh, they we, can run some pretty good money to get into it, especially an amped float plane. Absolutely. And when we discovered the Mead float manufacturer, we re realized the quality of float he was building and the value it represented for the price he was asking for the floats. And as light as they are being LSA floats, now they, they start to fit on other uh, airplanes. Carbon Cub is a natural candidate, but we also believe that the Sport Cub would be a good candidate as well. That's how we got into this project, is put the, this set of uh, Mead floats on a Sport Cub and see how well it would work. And it, it, what we have found is it's a very viable combination of airplane and float. So let's divide this up a little bit. We'll come back to the airplane and some changes that you also did to the engine that probably make it work better as a float plane. But let's just focus on the floats for a minute. Mead, you said, is out of Seabrink, Florida. How did you happen to come by them, and did you have some interactions before you just plunged in? It was a uh, little bit of detective work, because when the, the original float manufacturer that supplied the cup crafter stopped building floats, left a huge gap in the marketplace, and we had a customer that, that needed floats. So we, my partner and I started to, uh, to sniff around looking for another manufacturer, and we, and we just happened to come across Mead. And we, because he's in Florida and not too far from where I live, we, we made the trip down there to, to, to see him, got to know him, got uh, thoroughly educated on the way he puts together his floats. Uh, I was more of an aluminum float guy years ago. but Yeah, we're talking composite here. We're a composite carbon fiber, uh, Kevlar weaves and, and, and uh, impregnation and, and closed cell form, foam and that sort of thing. So. I had to be educated on, on what we were looking at, and once I got through with, with what he had to explain and taking a look at the way he put the floats together and the strength of the floats, then, then basically he won me over. So when we put... Now, he was already doing floats. He did, you didn't commission No, he was already at a, a design. This float was designed and was already... A uh, prototype was flown on a, a Jabiru pro, uh, and Meat's background goes is back in the uh, green. Yeah, ah, marine okay. racing boats. Oh, so he knows a thing or two about floating yep. on water. And he's been messing with composites for a long time. And you discovered this, got him on. What sets these floats apart from an aluminum float? The first basic structure with this float, when it is all put together, you look, there's no rivets, no seams. All right, it's smooth as silk. Smooth as anything. And, and so that's number one. You don't, you're not going to have rivets that are working loose, or you're not going to have seams. Yeah, they do get corner. quite a bit of torquing yeah. on the water and stuff. And with the other thing, with the with the material that he puts in the bottom of the float, the, the closed cell PVC core, that gives you about that much material in the bottom of the float. So wow. if you do get punctured, the closed cell keeps the water from migrating in. So you got some damage you'll have to fix, but you're not going to be sinking. It, it, it's going to still maintain the watertight integrity. If you get something that goes all the way through, well, there are seven different compartments here. Seven in the, float. In the whole float? Okay. Yep. And so then you just, you, if you get some speed tape with it, you tape it up, pump it out, and you fly home. And then do some repair work. The, the floats themselves, the composite design is stiffer, stronger. Uh, it'll maintain its shape better, which is good for water characteristics because you have a, a, a bottom that won't flex and, and move. So that right. means it's going to ride on the water very well. And in the end, this whole installation behind us with, with uh, struts and rigging and, and complete installation, including the hydraulic pump and the wheels, is 235 pounds. At 235 pounds, it'll go on a number of airplanes. Now, your original mission, you wanted to make it affordable. Uh, the airplane that we're looking at here, this is a Sport Cub, so this has the 100 horsepower Correct. Continental on it, not the 180 horsepower motor that Cub Crafters developed for the Carbon Cub. Correct. So this is a lower powered aircraft, and 100 horsepower is plenty of power for a land plane, but not always enough power for a float plane. That was one of the questions that, that, that was a concern of mine. As we looked at the numbers and the weight and, and my familiarity with the Sport Cup, my gut feel was that it was going to work. But to, to be sure, you don't actually find out until you do it. When we put 
put the floats on the airplane, we took several steps to get there. Number one, we converted the airplane from SLSA to ELSA so that we get so to do, do some, what you like. Now. We get to do some things, and that's the the wonderful part of the LSA system. Indeed. We we can get to do some things and that uh, within it's reason. Experimental. That's it. So, so you're with, allowed to do some of that. So we, when we converted it, started to, out as an SLSA. Yes. And then you converted it. We this, want to make sure that's. This working. is a factory built airplane that that spent the first five years of its life as an SLSA airplane. We bought it, converted it, made the the paperwork conversion to ELSA. We did an engine upgrade and went to higher compression pistons. Uh, so we're now getting a little more than, than 100 horsepower out of the out of the engine okay. now. How it, much? How much are you getting? You think? With the exhaust and propeller, we're getting. I think we're getting between 115 and 120. Okay. Well, that's enough extra boots. That'll get you off the water pretty quickly. This I year. wanted to maximize our chances for success the first time. Then we added the floats. So in, in the bottom line is it all works. It's a very viable system. Um, the price of this airplane behind us, as it sits right now, is 149 and a half. Now. That's as we see it with the amphib floats, yep. ready to go. I mean, the airplane looks, for all intents and purposes, new. You said it's got what, 400 and it's some a, it's hours? It's a little on it? over 500 hours to airframe and engine on it right now, and you yeah, got a lot a, of life left on that. It's, in it's many a, ways, then, it's so. a late 2001. I'm sorry, uh, late 2007 uh, Sport okay. Cup. As you can see, it, it, the Cup Looks Crafters builds a great yeah. airplane. They're holding up very well. I, this has not been prepped for the show in any way, so. And I'm very, very pleased with the performance of this airplane on the floats. Uh, it's about 11 seconds to get this airplane off the water right? okay. at 1,430 pounds. So let's just suppose I'm one of the many people who have bought, let's say, a Sport Cub, and I want to do these things myself. Will you sell me the floats? Absolutely. The floats are available uh, for $27,500. That's the Amphib floats? That's the Amphib floats. That's that includes the struts and the rigging and, and okay. for a Cub type installation, Sport Cub, uh, Carbon Cub type installation, or a similar airplane, it'll probably be about $4,000 for the initial installation. The Carbon Cub and the Sport Cub come with float fittings uh, already built in, so that uh, nothing additional has to be done. You do have to buy an exterior clamp for the rear float fitting and, and also a ventral fin is available from uh, Cub Crafters if you decide you need that. How long would it take the average person then to, to do a conversion like this? Um, from the kit that you're supplying? Well, first of all, you could do it legally for them. You could do all the work. Yes. It's an ELSA. It's not yep. an experimental amateur built, so you could do it all if they wanted, but back to Dave's question. Done it before. It'll probably take a week to do it. Um, Phil is it may be longer. Phil Mead has, has got some experience in doing this, so he's getting pretty pretty quick. But the initial installation, because uh, of the electric gear, it, it may take a, a few hours to do it. But once once it's been done... We're not talking months, though. You said no. a week, so yep. that's pretty quick, actually. Uh, it takes six weeks to build the floats, and then probably initial uh, another week to ten days to install them. Okay. Once, the, once they've been installed, then the, uh, uh, the floats can come on and off the airplane in about a day's time in the shop. Excellent. Well, that's a lot of information, but we always like to give people a, a reason to want more. The, so, absolutely. To get more information, we'll put it up on the screen too, but do you have a website that can go and dig down deeper and make contact with you and so forth? Yes, uh, meadfloats.com for specific information on mead floats, swtaviation.com, and uh, my email address is johnm at swtaviation.com. All right, very good. Speaking today with John Moreland from uh, SWT Aviation. We're here at Sun and Fun. We've got a look at an airplane that you might want to see more at. As soon as I see some more about it, I'll have information about it. I've already got lots of information about Cub Crafters on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks a lot for joining us today.